Okay, so welcome to History A-Level at Wardergrave School. My name is Mr. Drew, and I'm going to talk you through this short presentation about History A-Level. So the first question you're probably asking yourself, would it suit me? Well, if you can answer yes to the following four questions, then you should consider studying History A-Level. Number one, are you inquisitive about people and the past? Number two, do you like to discover why things happen? Number three, are you prepared to investigate and find things out for yourself? And finally, number four, are you prepared to challenge yourself, work hard and read widely? If you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you should consider taking history A-level. So what will you study at Waldegrave? Well, in year 12, you will study two units. The first of these looks at Russia from the period of the revolution in 1917, right up until the collapse of the Soviet Union. The second unit looks at the period of Mao's China from 1949 to 1976. In year 13, you will take a further two units. The first of these looks at rebellion and disorder under the Tudors from 1485 to 1603. You will also complete a piece of coursework on the causes of World War II. Now, I'm gonna leave this on the screen just for a few seconds so you can find out some more information about the Russia course. And here is the China course. And finally, the Tudor course. Okay, in terms of assessment, you will be assessed on each part of the course at the end of year 13. There are a total of three written exams, which represent 80% of the total qualification, and the other 20% is your coursework. The exams are a mixture of essay and source questions. A typical essay question would look something like this. The role of the People's Liberation Army was the key factor in establishing communist rule in China in the years 1949 to 1957. How far do you agree with this view? So you would be expected to write an introduction where you set out your line of argument, five main paragraphs of which one of those would look at the role of the People's Liberation Army and a conclusion. Now, if you do decide to take history in September, you will need to provide some folders, some A4 paper, and some dividers to keep your notes well organized. You would also need to buy three textbooks. The first two textbooks you will require in year 12, and the last textbook you will need in year 13. And it's a good idea to purchase these textbooks before your course begins. Uh, if you want to do some reading over the summer, I can strongly recommend these books. Uh, the first two particularly look at the history of China and were a really, really good read. Now, the kinds of things you do in class include note taking, writing essays, sorting activities, source analysis, debates. We sometimes listen to online lectures from professional historians, reading articles and the occasional video. And many of these activities are very similar to the style of GCSE activities. We provide lots of comprehensive resources to support you, including a history VLE page, which includes model essays, selected articles, access to all of the lesson PowerPoints and activities we do in class, revision guides, videos, and much more. And finally, history can lead you in many directions. You can read this quote from this report on this screen, and you will also see two famous people who studied history at university, the film and broadcaster Louis Theroux, and the Labour politician, Diane Abbott. I hope that's useful and I hope to see some of you in September. Thank you.